back to the Wiki Packer WG, um, live from Congress. Um, we have Lucas there. Lucas is back. Lucas just Lucas was just just was here 15 minutes ago, and now he's going to talk about Lily Pond. Lily Pond is like um, latech, but for music notes. And I hope you'll have fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I just want to talk a bit about Lillipond, which is a really cool program, in my opinion, to turn um, basically plain text inputs, such as the code you can see up here, into beautifully typeset musical scores, such as down here. And that's actually the result of this code up here. So um, you can try to find what belongs to what or something. And yeah, it's uh, free software, obviously. It takes plain text as input, which means you can put the code in a Git repository and add comments and stuff. It's all very nice. The output is PDF or MIDI if you want to listen back to it. Or you can even integrate it into LaTeX or TechInfo documents, such as these slides, which are created with LaTeX Beamer and uh, LilyPond in them, which is a really funny combination. And it works perfectly well. So let's just start with some of the syntax elements in a LilyPond file. And uh, it's pretty straightforward to make a note with a certain note name. You write that note name. Uh, so this is, I think, the American note names. I'm not sure if the English ones use a different ones, but A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A are the note names. And you write the letter and you get a note in return. And the relative mode here means that each note is going to be as close as possible to the previous one. For example, this A here at the beginning and the one at the end, that's the same input. but uh, you can see they resulted in different uh, notes. So this is one octave higher than the original one because that's the note that's closest to the preceding note. And to control the duration of a note, you put a number after it. For example, this is a quarter note, uh, so you put a number four after it. This is a sixteenth note, so you put a sixteen after it. And if it's a dotted note, such like this one, you put a literal dot after it. So there's a fair bit of ASCII art in there, which is kind of cute. And if it's more complicated, like the triplet here at the end, uh, you write something like this uh, backslash triplet. So that's kind of inspired by LaTeX syntax, this uh, backslashes and braces business. Uh, so this started out actually as a, um, I assume, horrible hack to make actually LaTeX produce these scores. And then eventually they realized that's not going to work. We should actually write this as a dedicated program in C or C++. I don't remember which one, uh, but the syntax kind of stayed similar, at least, in remembrance of that. And let's go back to a bit more syntax. Um, if, as I said, in relative mode, the, note tries to, the notes try to stay close together. For example, if I would just write C after this G, it would be the upper C up here, because that's closer than the lower C down here. And to get the lower C, which is correct in this melody, if you can identify it, that's an Easter egg for you. I put a comma after it. And to then jump back to the upper G instead of the lower one, I put an apostrophe after it, which, depending on the font, in this font it works really well. It's kind of the same character, just uh, the bottom and at the top of the line. In German, the apostrophe is also sometimes called the Hochkomma, the upper comma. So it kind of makes sense that you have uh, these two characters to jump up and down between octaves. And then you start to get a feel eventually when you need them and when you don't need them. But otherwise, you can just compile your LilyPond code as often as you want and see if it's right or not, because it doesn't take that long. And if you need to modify the notes further, uh, so if you have flat or sharp notes, uh, you can teach LilyPond to understand G sharp, for example, but no one will understand your score, because the standard notation in LilyPond is to add an I either an IS or an ES to the end of the note, which is uh, exactly what these notes are called in German, which is very convenient if you're German like me. Uh, the manual says it's uh, Dutch notation or something. So FIS means the F sharp. But what's important is this doesn't literally mean put an F and then put a sharp right in front of it. It means logically in the music, there's an F sharp. But then Lillipond can look, for example, here. It just puts an F because the F sharp is already part of the key signature, this whole snippet is in uh, B minor. So it has to have, no, it's in E minor, sorry. So it has to have uh, F sharp already, and we don't need to put one here. On the other hand, here we have an F. And in the syntax, in the input, that's just an F. But then Lillipond knows, because the key signature has an F sharp, it actually needs to put a natural sign here to cancel that out. 
So what you put in is kind of the logical, real music, so to speak. And then it's Lillipond's job to figure out where do I need to put these accidentals, where do I need to put these natural signs, and this depends even on which century style you're trying to emulate and which instrument. Like sometimes these things are in parentheses and sometimes they're not. But in general, all of this is Lillipond's job. You put in just the music and Lillipond makes a beautiful score for you. That's the job at least. If that doesn't work out, you can tweak the output. And here I have some a bit sillier tweaks. For example, I wanted a larger note head for some reason. And the note head is a character in a special font which Lillipon ships and embeds in this PDF file. And if I say I would like to add four to the font size, then I get a larger note head, at least for this one note. Or I can say I would like the color of all the note heads to be in dark red now. Or this tie, which would normally be uh, downwards, like this one, it should now go upwards because I've overridden it here. And I can even say, so this uh, tie is actually a cubic Bezier curve, so it's going to have four control points. And I would like to add these four pairs of offsets to the four control points to make this kind of looping shape. Um, that's obviously very silly, but sometimes this can be useful, like if you have a score where you have a long. Um, articulation bow, I'm not sure what it's called in English actually, but this kind of thing over a long period of notes which where it makes like a Z shape or an S shape um, and Lillipond can't figure that out by itself, then you can tell it I would like the curve to look exactly like this and kind of tweak the output as much as you want. And you can actually go even further than this. Does anyone in the audience recognize this kind of syntax here? It's kind of Yes, Lisp. It is a dialect of Lisp called Scheme. So you can embed whole Scheme programs in your score. So here I've said the color of each stem should be controlled by this lambda, this anonymous function, which takes a graphical object. In this case, that's going to be the stem. And compare the direction of that to up. If it's up, then return red. Otherwise, return blue. So now I have a score where all the stems are blue if they point down, and red if they point up, which is completely pointless, but it's very funny. And so you can go much further than this. Like, uh, this is some monstrosity I wrote because I wanted to have this score where you can see in the right hand, here you have the same notes uh, twice, uh, once in the bass line and then one octave higher. And it's just always one octave higher. And for some reason, I could not be bothered to actually add the second note to each of the eight chords here, which would have taken like two minutes at most, and instead I spent like one and, hour, one and a half hours putting together this code, which takes an arbitrary melody and goes through it, and for each note creates a copied note, which is uh, somewhere here. Yeah, it creates a copy of the note, then sets the pitch to something else, and copies some of the articulations, but not others. So this has a second tie here, but it should not have a second fermata sign. And in the end, you have this function, and you can even put it on Stack Overflow or something. And that kind of represents this. Um, what I really like about Lillipond is that it represents this whole spectrum between uh, just simple music transcription and full-blown programming. So if I get home at the end of the day and I'm really tired and don't have much mental capacity, I can just take some public domain score and transcribe it and just say, this is a D, this is an F sharp, this is a quarter note, and so on. And it doesn't take much work. But if I want, if I feel up to it, or if I want to have some fun, then I can also do the whole programming thing and write monsters like this and completely bend the score to my will, make it look exactly how I want to. And that's what I find really neat about Lillipond. And if you want to find, more find out more about that, there are two manuals here. They're really well written. I basically read them front to back a while ago. And they have lots of examples as well. The Lillipond snippet repository is even cooler. It is just a huge collection of tiny snippets of Lillipond code, and all of them are CC0, so you can use them however you want without worrying about attribution or anything. And you can even try it out in your browser on lillybin.com without installing anything. And if you're wondering, wait, doesn't that mean I'm running arbitrary code on someone else's computer? It's not my computer. I don't know. <laughs> Knock yourself out, I guess. But uh, that's all I have already. I'm out of time. But thank you for indulging me.